Hang on, I forgot the crystals. Oh. <laughs> no game audio. True. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we're going up against Champion Victor. They should turn Coke Zero to Coke One. I mean, I feel like when you see what Coca-Cola can do with zero calories, one calorie would go crazy. <laughs> Imagine what they could get out of that one calorie. It would probably taste like 10 times better. Okay, I'm ready for you, brother. I had a, I, well, I, that's a lie. I did not really have a good sleep. I'm not ready for you at all. NL, I saw you standing Olivia Rodrigo yesterday. I'm here to tell you to listen to get him back. I can do that. I'm basically the youngest 34-year-old that is sane. I'm not 38-year-old GF who somehow still says, my sweet summer child. Like, I'll hop on Spotify and say, hey, Spotify, play a Bad Idea, right? By Olivia Rodrigo. The song, because it's uh, for Gen Z, is 103 seconds long total. It's the longest song that Gen Z has ever produced. Next song that comes on, Super Shy by New Jeans. You think I'm hitting the shuffle button? Absolutely not. I'll listen to that. Open your eyes. I don't know what comes on after that. I don't have that long of a drive most of the time. Spinning back fist, gut shot. I'm sane. I'm the sanest motherfucker in this journey. Oh! I remember. I remember. I deserve to heal. I deserve to heal. That was great blocking. We go crazy on him. That's not hitting me. Okay. That's hitting me. You're going down. Ooh! Victor's off the fruit bars. So true, so true. I'm the oldest 28-year-old. I'm putting on Frank Sinatra. That's honestly so funny. I'm... <laughs> Can I say something? I <laughs> you do not have my permission to show this to anybody over the age of 50, okay? I think that Frank Sinatra is not a good singer. And he didn't write the songs, right? So like what's the point? There's sometimes, I mean Sam Yo's known to play uh, the occasional Frank Sinatra song. And I don't, like, you know, stop pedaling and, and hit him with a weird champ or something like that. You're so real for that? I feel like he sings like I sing. He's, he's, he's like the first rapper. Like, he doesn't really have, like, a pitch. He just talks. And regrets. I have a few. But then again, too few to mention. I'm... Worst take you've ever had? I don't think... I'm just saying, if Frank Sinatra was on American Idol... I do think he probably gets to Hollywood. But I don't think he makes it... Into the top 16. Like, he's not, he's not beating Justin Guarini, let's put it that way. He would win on The Masked Singer? Do they even have a winner on that? I don't know. Let's hear his Bob Dylan bit. Well, Bob Dylan is an idiosyncratic singer, an interesting singer. That being said, he's also like one of the goaded songwriters of all time. 
I'm not a voice shell. Like, I, I don't really care for, like, an Adele or something like that. A Kelly Clarkson outside of, like, Since You've Been Gone. I care more about, uh... Care more about the unifying package. Open your eyes. Gaze upon the he won a Nobel Prize for writing songs. Bob Dylan? It's crazy to think he's the smartest dude to ever win a Nobel Prize. So Katy Perry? Listen, Katy Perry, I don't know if Katy Perry wrote the songs. Katy Perry kicks the shit out of Frank Sinatra, though. You will not catch my ass doing a 30-minute Cody Rigsby, Frank Sinatra ride. Minus two, minus two, minus two. Y'all are old, you're old and crusty and dusty. You probably eat Werther's Originals. You put Gold Bond medicated powder on your ball sack every morning. You probably use Seltzen Blue anti-dandruff shampoo. Seltzen Blue, everybody. Did you like the Willow songs in Camille Ramon's ride this morning? Yeah, but I was confused. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is, um, is Willow different from Willow Smith? Because I was waiting for her to whip her hair back and forth. Especially because it was a pop punk ride. It's the same person? It is? I thought I was making a joke. Willow is Willow Smith. Holy cow. Good for her. Yeah, I thought it was good. She does not whip her hair back and forth anymore. I mean, I'm pretty sure that song came out when she was like 10. That song still clear as anything Frank Sinatra ever made. No offense, Jay. I know New Jersey loves Frank Sinatra, right? You also love Bruce Springsteen. So I'll say like a, a broken clock is right twice a day. Also, I'm sorry you have to see this. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen is so ass. DL Guiga, shut up, bro. You know, you you suggest I got mad. Well, not mad. I got self-conscious because like I on the Peloton, I rode basically with nobody else joining me on rides for like two years almost, right? So I realized now that we got like 10 people joining the rides, it would be a nice thing to do to let some of the other egg card members pick some rides, you know? So it's not just me picking the same stuff over and over. So I said, hey, you all got any suggestions for rides? Catch my ass giving DL Guiga the keys to the kingdom for 30 minutes and not me listening to a Machine Gun Kelly song? How did that happen? On the, on the first time I give up the keys to the car, you're taking me through the Burger King drive-thru? Now you're trying to tell me Bruce Springsteen sucks? Like we're not almost on the 50 year anniversary of Born to Run? One of the greatest albums of all time about wanting to get the fuck out of New Jersey? Oh, I almost had you dead to rights. Oh, it's doing so well too. <laughs> <clears throat> and y'all really be writing for 12 songs? That's crazy. What are you talking about 12 songs? 12 songs times three to four rides, bro. Am I a joke to you? Are you a TGIF Katy Perry fan or a Firework Katy Perry fan? I mean, Firework's not my Katy Perry song of choice. Um, 
but I guess I'm more of a, a firework fan. I'm way more I'm way more into the the teenage dream roar um, firework sort of stuff than I am into the last Friday night I kissed a girl um, hot and cold etc etc but that's the great thing about Katy Perry is that you can you can rock either right like I find personally that something like Teenage Dream goes really nicely after you listen to the entirety of Spider-Land. Like, it's just a nice, like, shot chaser, you know? He's got another one in him. <laughs> no! Thirty-minute Jeff Mangum ride. Thirty-minute neutral milk hotel would go pretty hard. <laughs> You're so weak. So are oh, it's a dance, and I'm winning. Oh, I almost had the perfect on that one. Not bad, not bad. Hey, hey. Has he talked about Peloton yet? Almost exclusively for the first, like, 30 minutes. You missed it all. My brain played like a little preview of what this dude was going to do before he did it. That's how I know we're almost there. Gut shot, motherfucker. Greed. No, not going to happen. <laughs> the new world belongs to us. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm putting some shit on my grinder, dude. Oh, wait a second. I've been trying. You know what? Fuck the grinder. Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I said, time out. He said, next shot wins. Hang on, what do we got here? I'm back in the saddle, baby. Baby, recovered from COVID. My lungs texted me the frick back. Congratulations, Jay. Jay, I'm going to give you the real secret to Peloton. You're, you're ready for it? <clears throat> the secret to Peloton, everyone thinks it's about building a routine. That is true. That's a big part of it. But the real long-term secret to success, I mean, this is very forehead. But if you think it's going to be like magic words that unlock something in your brain, that's, that's naive, okay? The secret is you have to get back to it once you get knocked off. Anybody can maintain the routine for three months, okay? But eventually, life's going to get in the way. You're going to have a two-week vacation to Hawaii, something traumatic like that. You're going to get a respiratory illness that's going to, like, slow you down. The secret is getting back as soon as it's healthy to do so. Because as an adult, it's just the way of the world, man. Stuff's going to get in the way. That's why, and I'm not knocking anybody here that's like 21 years old, but when I was talking to my brother-in-law last Christmas, you know, we were having like, I, I would describe it as like a heart to heart. And I was explaining to him, like, I didn't know how busy I could be until I had a kid. And then like it, however busy you are, you're like, this is as busy as I could possibly get. 
and then like add 10% to it again. <laughs> like once every three months and just keep compounding like the 10% on the 10% on the 10%. And I was like, why the fuck? When I was like 20 years old, why was I not jacked all the time, dude? I had nothing to do. At the time, it felt like I was so busy. Oh, I thought I had that. Because you drank instead? Well, no, I think at like age 19, I could have binge drank three times a week and still had like a six pack. It just would have required me playing like way less Civilization 4 for no reason. Obviously, as you get older, that's not possible. But when you're like 19 years old, you're basically like superhuman. Like you have Wolverine's healing factor. Goated game choice, though. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. In senior year, I went to the gym five times a week and AA once a week. Wait, that's not the same, though. No disrespect, okay? But going to AA is a lot easier than binge drinking three times a week, okay? AA, that's got to be like, what, a two-hour meeting once a week? Binge drinking, like that, it takes up your whole night. And then also, you sleep in, and then you're, you're all messed up in the morning. That's like, that'll screw up your, oh, that'll screw up your whole lifestyle. Incredible bit. It's just the truth. I'm not saying it's more admirable to binge drink. It's quite the opposite. I'm just saying if we're talking in terms of the time investment. It takes a lot of dedication to be a binge drinker. Like that, that shit eats up all your other time. You're not having many other hobbies. It's very impressive, I agree. That's not what I said. <laughs> Stop making it sound like a skill. I'm not, it is a skill. I'm not saying it's a skill worth having. Like gooning is a skill. It's not a skill worth having, but it is a skill. The thing is, when you're like 19 and you see someone that's skilled at binge drinking, you're like, wow, that guy's so cool. And when you're 34 and you see someone that's skilled at binge drinking, you're like, Oh no. Like you're going to die. What's your gooning level? I don't know, man. What's the cap? If the cap's level 40, I have to say I'm like a level, I might be like a level 25. I might have a level 25 gooning character, at least. I don't know if, if I just loaded into that character. I don't know if I would be able to, to hang in those dungeons. But, I mean, there was a time when I was like an only child who lived at home with broadband internet access, so like... I definitely, I got the, I've got at least one character on the server that has made it to Act 3, let's put it that I don't know if I'm leading new characters out on meth runs or anything like that, but... What the hell is this? Punch me in the back of the head, that's like one of the worst places to get punched. <clears throat> Did you see that uh, Diablo 4 is doing like a blood drive to unlock new items. I only saw it because I saw a quote tweet of the uh, promotion today and said, unfortunately, I can't access the new Diablo 4 items because I'm gay. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, it's a great idea, but I maybe they didn't think through all the, the repercussions. <laughs> Oh. Uh.
you still can't donate blood if you're gay? I don't know. Like here, like in Canada, you definitely couldn't the last time I donated blood. Now I'm thinking, imagine like when they take your blood, they're like, are you gay? And you're like, no, bro, come on. And then they do like the fucking thing from the thing and they put like a hot wire to it and the blood like jumps up and it's like, ah, <laughs> get out of here. But you definitely couldn't the last time I donated blood. I know th this is like maybe my least well-liked take. Obviously, donating blood is good for the world and good for society. And it makes you feel good too because you're doing something good for society. That shit, it just got to the point where it was taking too motherfucking long. You know I do not like Elon Musk, but he should start a blood bank. Because that industry needs to be disrupted. Or maybe it's good that it's very safe considering it's in healthcare. But there's no... The, the overall process... The part of giving blood where they take your blood takes like 10 minutes at most. And then you get like a cookie and you watch 5 minutes of Everybody Loves Raymond. Why is your ass at the blood bank for an hour doing like 17 surveys you've done before and then going into a secret room and doing another survey that you've done 10 times before? It's too much, brother. We need to have like a drive through blood bank or something. Oh, I had you. I guess that's probably not a good thing. Because, like, when you, you don't want to pass out when you drive. But also, um, I mean, while we're unhinged here... You wouldn't catch my ass passing out after giving blood. What do you got, like, eight pints of it? They take one pint? My ass... I, I'm, I'm sorry. You gotta, you gotta be a little bit more ambitious than that. Oh, I knew it too. I'm not, I'm not passing out after one pint. Simply not gonna happen. Also, I said this before, but the last time I donated blood, it was like three months after I came back from South Korea, and they took me into secondary screening. And then um, busted out like a map of South Korea. And they were like, have you ever been to any of these locations? As if like I got malaria or something. I was going to introduce that shit into the Canadian ecosystem or something. It took like an hour and a half to donate blood. And then the motherfuckers have the audacity to like call you and be like, hey, we've got an appointment tomorrow at like 5.07 a.m. We desperately, we desperately, desperately need blood. At the same time, all of our appointments are full. We can't fit you in until, uh, hey, we got, a, we got an 11.35 p.m. slot open on Saturday, if you're interested. Other than that, we're all booked up. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, man. You would, if you want my blood that bad, you, you know, make some accommodations for me to make it, you know, to make it easy for me. It's my blood. I'm happy to give it if you if you come to my house you could you could pop the needle into my arm while I'm streaming I don't even care but oh you're so freaking lucky I'm stupid yeah saw that one coming a mile away if I'm at least gonna gonna go to your establishment. I guess it's a clinic, it's not really an establishment. But if I'm gonna go to your establishment at a time that's convenient for you to give blood, you better give me the good nurse, okay? You better give me the nurse who knows how to find the vein. Don't give me the nurse that takes seven tries to find the vein.
It's your veins fault? Bro, I'm fucking, it's dick skin December out here. I got, I got big blue gummy worms coming out of my whole body. If you can't find my, if, if, my hematic railroads, that's your own fault. You excited for the frozen frenzy tonight? Is this, oh, tonight's the night that every team in the NHL is playing 15 minutes apart so that no games start at the same time? That's pretty cool. I've been really trying to like watch sports lately because I can do it while looking after my child. <laughs> Thought I was gonna watch Monday Night Football last night. That didn't really work out that way. Congratulations to the Minnesota Vikings. Nonetheless. Ooh, hang on. This is this one feels like a great time to focus. Are the sharks good? The Raiders are really bad this year, so it might be a good year to get into hockey. Who's gonna tell them? Jay, do you wanna tell them? <laughs> They're anticipated to probably be the worst team in the NHL. But hey, usually the team that's anticipated to be the worst team in the NHL is actually only like the fifth worst team in the NHL by the end of the year. So you got that going for you. Let me out. I don't want to be in the damn corner with you, man. Plus, I don't have sympathy for Sharks fans yet. I know you never won the cup, but you were so good for so long. You must have had like the highest win percentage from 2000 to like 2018. Oh. <laughs> it's not that bad. Okay, okay, okay. Hold. Oh! The hell did that come from? Hold. I. <laughs> he's so motherfucking fast, bro. At some point, we're gonna have to block some attacks. Don't worry about the fire, okay? He's doing a lot of the same shit he did in phase one. Have some confidence in yourself. Okay, that's fine. No more. Relax. Oh, the timing was just slightly off. Oh, the two-piece. We were close, man. We were close. You see that the U.S. blood business is worth $3 billion? and they export a lot of it, they're making money on your blood? I don't live in the United States of America. I live in Canada. The only people making my money off of my blood are the companies that manufacture the plastic bags that hold the blood. I'm sure those get billed out to the taxpayer at like $75 a bag or something like that. So that guy's living high on the hog. He probably has a mansion somewhere in the Thousand Islands. 
Other than that, everybody else involved in the business, from the nurse to the administrator of the clinic to the people donating their blood, everybody else is getting fucking screwed. <laughs> But the dude who made the bags? Oh, baby. Oh, I'm still chilling, bro. And the cookie suppliers. So true. The dad's cookie corporation. If they ever lose that Canada Blood Services contract, they're in a lot of trouble. Because nobody's buying that shit outside of CBS. I threw that shit before I walked in the room. You know they're building 20 bucks a cookie. That's my new thing, is assuming that everything that I experience in a public service is being billed out to the taxpayer at like 100 times its actual value. Every time someone gets a diet soda at BC Women's Hospital, you know they're sending Justin Trudeau up. $75 invoice. <clears throat> oh, I'm so back. Still back. Still back. Oh, he's got more in him. What is this full menace thing on your left trigger? Nobody really knows. It's one of the interesting things about it. They introduced a mechanic that nobody's ever used. Ooh, heal. He thinks he's Hob. Risky, risky, risky. This could be huge. Oh, <laughs> the new world belongs to us. Oh, you got to block that one. Quiet. I'm quiet. Moisturized, unbothered, in my lane, about to get punched to death. Don't step on me. Don't step on. Okay, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still mashing. That's the one you got it. You got to hit every single one of those. Oh, he came back a little hot on me. Okay, I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. I'm unbothered, I'm in my lane. <laughs> we are close, though. You ever beat the Nameless King? One of my favorite bits is the streamer. Not as the viewer, you might find it 
less interesting. But as the streamer is when like someone clearly watched me in high school and then went to college and for four years like role played as like a cool guy and now they're back in their family's house and they realize that it's the situation that maketh the man less than the man maketh the situation. So now they're out here posting like 2017 era memes. Brother, we've come a long way, okay? It happened to me too. I've been there. I'm just saying the world has turned and left you here. We got a different sort of thing going on. You, yeah, you, they, you don't even know about Seath and Priscilla. You know about Seath and Priscilla, but you don't know about Seath and Priscilla. Two dragons at the same time, you know what I'm saying? That was not how you want to handle them. This is how you want to handle them. Now back it up, back it up. Okay, one, one eighth dead. Oh, every time. <laughs> I didn't even see what D.L. Guiga wrote, okay? But I'm just saying, D.L. Guiga, you gotta respect him because he's an honest character. You know, there's the classic, how can you be thirsty when air is 30% water? I workshopped the, it's crazy that our ancestors, like, would go on 10 hour long runs to hunt back in the day, but they didn't even have a Gatorade to chug when we got back. D.L. Guiga hit me with that. Actually, they used to chug watered down honey, so it was basically the same thing. D.L. Guiga's always got a, he's always got an actually in him, okay? But you know what? I'm not mad about it because I'm learning a lot. I didn't know that they used to drink watered down honey back in the day. You didn't know about the honey? I didn't. I must have skipped honey class. We do love him. We do love our DL Guigas. We didn't know about the honey. He told us about the honey. Okay, I remembered what that move was. That's a first. NL and Dan both stuck on a souls boss. We are so back. Brother, who's stuck? It just, it's a task. It takes as long as it takes. No, there's no stuck. You know, you can't mow your lawn in a single stroke. You gotta cover the whole acreage. This is... This is the one you have to be lights out on. We were lights dimmed. Oh, that's the other one you gotta be lights out on. That's another one. Wouldn't hurt to be lights out on that one. I'm ready. Oh, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, right. We take those. It's got a sting. One at a time. Oh, 
Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I had him too. <laughs> he do just keep breathing for a little bit. He's got DOT on him. He's torched for sure. People are like, damn, you hubris. We're gonna beat it. What's the problem? You're just mowing the lawn, man. You think you got the mon the lawn all finished? Then you're like, wait a minute, I left a little bit there. Let me get the edge trimmer. Wait a minute, there's still some space in between the stone steps. Let me get the let me get the edge trimmer. The problem is when you finish mowing the lawn, you're like, damn, now I gotta go inside. the hell am I going to do in there? Like the dishes? My it's better to not be done. Do you own an edge trimmer? Uh, duh. How do you think I'm going to get the space in between the stone steps, bro? How are the leaves today? They're back. Raking your leaves. Listen, I enjoyed myself when I was doing it. And I'm looking forward to doing it again this weekend. It's nice to be outside. But it is like, it's one of the biggest scams in yard work for sure. I mean, like you, you could take all the leaves off of your property. Two days later, the leaves are right back there. I don't think I've earned a heal yet. Okay, maybe two quick ones. Not raking leaves is good for insects. I honestly, um, I'm bringing back a uh, human-centric lifestyle. I'll do what I can do to support the bees. I'm not out here trying to kill a bee just for buzzing around. Like, that's that's its lot in life. That's what it does. But if you're like, hey, this is good for, like, the, the June bugs. This is good for the spiders. The spiders... Maybe it's time they handle themselves, quite frankly. I can't be res I can barely be responsible for myself. Meanwhile, you're you're leaving me responsible for the whole fucking biosphere? Like that's just too much pressure, dude. I know it's easy when your ass doesn't have a lawn or something like that. And you're like, you should do this, you should do that. You know what you should do? You should mind your own damn business or bring your shit over and I'll, I'll bust out the Ryobi. And you can sort it out for me. I got all the tools in the shed. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm not going to make you drive over in a truck or try to put the damn lawnmower, the weed trimmer, all the fertilizer and shit like that on the back of your bike. <clears throat> The bugs, they definitely would not look out for me. There's no chance. Kate did say, she was like, this spring we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with our garden. And I honestly thought she might be conducive to this. I said, you know, we could just pave the whole thing over and put like a basketball court out there. <laughs> She was not interested. She said, I'd rather have some greenery. It's the first time I've ever heard my wife my use that word. I was like, we could... You get like a little stone slab or something like that and at least put out like a... It doesn't have to be a basketball court, but we could just have like a hoop out there or something like that.
You got me, kid. I dedicate this victory to you. What about a patio with grass and then a slab? We don't have that kind of space. We're really like it's uh, you got to choose like one or the other for sure. We're definitely not having like a lawn, a garden, and then like a backyard bar type area. You got to pick one and run with it. No gazebo? Probably, probably would not, it wouldn't make sense to put a gazebo out there, unfortunately. You could definitely fit a basketball hoop, though. <laughs> Kate, you know it's true. It's the perfect size for like, oh, gut shot, of course. It's the perfect size for a Canadian tire. Oh, I tried to block it. For a Canadian tire basketball. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, again, I have to remind myself, like, mentally, where I was at when I came back from vacation after talking to normal people. And re anytime I, I am on Twitch for, like, more than two days in a row, I have to remember, this is not reality. This is, in this is where insane people come to ply their trade. Myself included, to be fair. Find myself saying things like, yeah, you know what, maybe I am a bad person if I don't get a clover lawn. Then I go talk to my neighbor for five seconds, and I'm like, Clover, lawn? Fuck that, bro. I already got grass. I'm just going to keep it rolling. Are you crazy? They've lost their mind out there. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with the Clover lawn. I'm just saying, it's a whole lot of work to, to get the damn microfauna feeling better. They got plenty of space. They could go down to the park or something like that. This ain't, this ain't Cincinnati, you know? We got plenty of green space in Vancouver. I assure you, if you compare the bee population in Vancouver... Got shot. I knew it. To the bee population in Toledo, Vancouver clears easy. Easy. You were also saying to pave it? If anything, Vancouver needs more gray space. Controversial take. Malik, back me up here. <laughs> they said plus two! They said plus two! I have a clover lawn, it's even more beautiful than grass. Yeah, no, you don't get to say that. I want to talk to your neighbors. Put your neighbors on the keyboard. We live in a society, okay? No gut shot? Oh, we're dancing on him. But Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no stam. Oh, he's got the uppercut, of course. Think you'd ever wear a gas mask like Champion Victor? Yeah, if I got a, a triple canister on the back filled with gamer girl farts, I could see it happening. I'm not gonna do it just to like, you know, breathe during wildfire season or something like that, but for a good reason, sure, absolutely. Oh, so you can be weird? I'm not allowed to be weird?
Isn't your wife watching? Bro, she's even weirder than I am. Kate, back me up on this. You're 34? The internet has to figure out where it stands, okay? Because if my ass is 34 and I'm supposed to be normal, then stop telling me to get a clover lawn. Stop telling me not to rake my leaves because it's bad for the pill bugs or something like that. That is not normal. You're living in a fantasy land. Okay, that was huge. The new world belongs to us. Check him PC. That's what I'm saying. Check him PC. I think you legit need normal friends. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> I'm good, honestly. I'm going to bridge night this week. Oh, you missed me. Now you gotta kiss me. Right, okay, I should have seen that one coming. burn little little dot would go a long way here i'm alive <laughs> oh i really thought that was the one i really thought that was the one we got him on the next one for sure You ever consider moving to a rural area? I think I could be, I think I could excel in a rural environment. I think I could be the guy who like when I'm not there, all the dudes with the cowboy hats are like, he voted for Bernie. He's good people though. We don't hold that against him. I think I could be that guy. You're not that guy? I think I'm that guy, man. I think I could I could endeavor to be that guy. Oh, how'd you get me? <laughs> Which province? Good question. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. How would you explain your job to a bunch of farmers? I mean, I think they'd be able to understand it. Just because they live a, a more traditional way of life doesn't mean, you know, they, they probably still have Netflix access. They're probably not going to be the inner, the inner what now? The huh? They came straight from the 1880s? They did not come straight from the 1880s. Even the seeds came from like 2012. They were invented by Monsanto. Open your eyes. I was workshopping a joke in my head when I was doing the dishes last night. It's something like the 19-year-old building DoorDash 2. And don't forget, guys, we're out here changing the world every single day. 
the one guy who manages the water treatment plant in British Columbia that serves 17 million people. Hey boss, I can't come in until noon today. Something like that. Hang on, I'm just I'm still kind of cooking up what I want out of it. I'm, I'm cooking up what I want the punchline to be. There's something there. Origin likes the joke. It's a scary thought. You know what? I gotta scuttle that one. <laughs> How is he getting plus twos without a punchline? It's the influence of the I Hov COVID joke. I'm realizing humor doesn't have to have a punchline, it just has to be funny. It's taken a long time to get there. I died! Guy who manages the water treatment plant. I have COVID. <laughs> Twitter is debating whether Pog is a slur, and I just can't with this hell site today. What a, what a great line. I wish I wrote that line. Twitter is debating whether Pog is a slur, and I just can't with this hell site today. Oh, man. Strong millennial energy. That's, they've encapsulated millennialism. Not all millennials, but millennialism. They've encapsulated in that joke. That's probably a top 100 tweet of all time. 100 is not meant to be derogatory, by the way. There's a lot of great tweets. Me and my friends would have beat E.T. to death with hammers, I'll tell you that much. Like, that's, that's definitely up there. Holy... What are we doing here, Victor? I know what I'm doing. Hitting you with a with a walk up ult out of nowhere. And dodging kind of goes crazy, huh? So hungry, gotta find my wife and head to PF Chang's. That's a good one. I love the one of that, like, Edmonton City Councilor that is like, my wife just got home from a 12-hour, like, overnight nursing shift, and here she is shoveling the snow, like, <laughs> so good. Oh, we're dancing on him today. No stand. Can we circle back to the gamer girl fart comment? Sure, do you need the joke explained to you? Is this something that happens a lot? Good, good shot, good shot, good shot. Two of these, please. Wor not worth, not worth. Obviously not worth. He's getting juiced up. Okay, we're back. Big, big blocks. You gotta block that one, brother. Keep them in the distance. Keep them out of your face. He's on 30%. I'm feeling good. Bit by bit. 
bit by bit. And dodging goes crazy on this guy. You see an easy block, you gotta step to him and try to block. Now just chill. You see an easy dodge, you owe it to yourself to take that, give him a slice on his old trapezius region. Yeah, you're cooked. Shouldn't have taken that long. <laughs> it, that took longer than it should have taken. That's not, don't embarrass yourself. That's nothing. Like I said, it's just mowing the lawn. It takes as long as it takes. Pinwheel? I'm surprised you defeated Victor. Geppetto's Simon Manus are truly marvelous. Ah, but where are my manners? My name is Simon Kevin Manus, James a leader among alchemists. I've known your father for a long time. Not your dad, we I knew your dad. Colleagues, you know. Geppetto didn't understand that the petrification disease can strengthen humankind. Locks into conventional thinking, I'm afraid. But even he can't stop such a magnificent... Yo, discovery. Geppetto didn't do anything. It's the door to a new world. Myas is out here you doing all the work. With your own eyes? Truly inspiring, is it not? He did? He didn't do shit, dude! Has he made you? He didn't do anything. You're short-sighted, just like your father. But you speak the truth as you see it, just like everyone else. Has your nose grown at all we this game? Does this answer your question? Holy brother, save some air for the rest of us. On a deeper level. <laughs> you guys smell that? Not signify death. Look at that hack job. <laughs> A purified human who overcomes the petrification disease will gain a strengthened body and a mind free of lies. The essence is ergo. Yes, the ergo you use as your... Yeah, well, the gas I put in my car used to be a dinosaur. You don't see me crying about it. Our undertaking... Gotta get to work. Others experience this purification through this elixir. Truly, it's an honor. Ergo's power can do even more. You do? In the hands of the awake. Hypothetically, its abilities if I didn't work from home. Endless. We already have the means to control that power. Power beyond your imagination. Work? Okay, well, so if I worked, and that work did not take place in the home, then I would need to drive a car. Forward into humanity's future. In which the case, the gasoline would be made from dinosaurs. The island and witness our triumph firsthand. Or perhaps you'll make a futile effort to stop us. <sighs> Maybe the Santa statue can help you. In any case, good. keep your chin up. Saintness of Mercy statue gallery key. You would not expect this, but I know where that is. I swear to you. 
I'm at the airport and a whole family just tried to edge their way to the front of the line. We live in a society. I feel, I feel a certain way about this. This is not going to be a popular take. If the family had kids under five, it's FAA rules and regulations that they get to board in zone one. That's all I'm saying, okay?